Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I'm taking you back to Gettysburg, 1863. The battle is concluding and trouble is afflict for some of the surgeons of General Robert E. Lee's army. They are overwhelmed and they receive orders to remain behind with the wounded. This means that they're going to become prisoners of war. One of those individuals is pictured here. He is Simon Baruch of the 3rd Battalion, South Carolina Infantry. He receives that order. He knows what it means. He's been through this once before, the following fall at Antietam, and here he is again. He writes an account of what happened to him in 1914 when it's published, and he really goes into some interesting detail, and he gives you a sense of the turbulence of war, the topsy-turvy times. So I want to read you a little bit of his narrative because I think it gives you a flavor of just what he and his comrades on the medical side of the Army of Northern Virginia faced in the wake of the loss and the advance of Union cavalry. So here we go. Quote, all day and all night, the work continued at the field hospital, and throughout the following day, also, the wounded came pouring in, many on foot, among them several captured Union soldiers, on two of whom I operated, operating on them like they were our own. At sundown, I threw myself on a hay and slept until aroused by an orderly who brought a command from General Lee for doctors Pierce, Knott, and myself to remain at the Black Horse Tavern Field Hospital until further orders. Since the army was in full retreat, we realized that this order meant capture by the enemy. Having been left in charge of the Disciples Church Field Hospital at Boonesboro, Maryland, under similar orders a year previous, and on that occasion, having had six weeks of the most agreeable period of army life, I regarded this order into captivity with much more complacency than did my colleagues. <clears throat> the morning found us amid novel surroundings. The slightly wounded had been removed, most of them being able to march. The field hospital contained now 222 seriously wounded men, 10 orderlies, and three surgeons. The demands of hunger claimed paramount attention for we had not eaten a meal in three days. <clears throat> a peacock strutting on the meadow was slain and roasted for our breakfast. Within the tavern, which had been hastily abandoned on the approach of the enemy, cold biscuits, some coffee and sugar, dishes, etc. were found. A table was constructed in the orchard. The surgeons seated themselves to enjoy a feast, which the hospital cook had placed steaming upon the table. Here was peace at last. Above our heads, the July sun shone brightly, birds were twittering in the trees, and the fragrant blossoms scented the still air. The calm following the continuous roar of cannon of yesterday seemed uncanny. Never shall I forget the satisfaction with which I raised a knife to carve this novel roast fowl, saying, here goes my companions laughed in joyous response. The knife had not touched the fowl when suddenly the scene of content and promised joy was overcast by the clouds of war. A shell flew shrieking over our heads, its shrill whistle silenced by an explosion in the field nearby. There were an astonished and disappointed trio of doctors. The wounded began to moan, calling us to come to them. A yellow cloth was hastily fastened to the lightning rod of the barn, and we passed among the wounded to reassure them while six shells exploded in uncomfortable proximity. When all was quiet again, we noticed two scouts with field glasses in their hands dashing away. After the wounded had been quieted, we, we returned to the deserted breakfast table consumed the cold food, and discussed the probable cause of the interruption. Happening to observe the hill in front of the orchard, my eyes beheld a novel spectacle. 
As far as the eye could reach, the summit of the hill was covered by a line of cavalry whose weapons shimmered in the brilliant July sun. The suddenness of their appearance lent awe to the scene. Slowly, the line rode down the hill. Dr. Pierce, the ranking officer, directed me to meet the pickets and to surrender because, he saw, you understand these Yankees. I hastily donned my gray coat and green sash and sauntered toward the advancing line, the cavalrymen being, being about three feet apart. A burly fellow ominously raised his pistol when I said, I surrender. The cavalryman said, where's your commanding officer? In a distinctly Irish brogue, he cried aloud, say, Cap, here's a Reb wants to see you. The captain galloped to my side, saluted, and asked, are there many rebels around? I said, yes, but they're all wounded. He replied, we'll see to that ourselves. Fall in, men. The bugle sounded, and the cavalcade dashed away. So there you have it, the moment when Surgeon Simon Baruch fell into enemy hands, having walked out after his lunch, his impromptu cold lunch of roasted peacock and some biscuits on the day that he and other surgeons and 222 men, all Confederate soldiers, were in a field hospital when the Union Army advanced on them following the Battle of Gettysburg. So until the next time, we'll see you on the trail.